Okay, so we are back in Blender with our post collection exposed for the unwrapping of the post now. I'll probably break this into two separate videos like I've done whilst modeling this. So we're going to unwrap the metal frames and the wooden posts in one video, and then we'll come back and unwrap the rings and the lamp in a separate video. So what I'm going to do actually with that in mind is just take these bits that we're not going to be focusing on today and I'm just going to select all of these and hide all of the components we won't be using and I'll just turn on the uh, shortcut keys as well to show you what I'm pressing. Okay so this one's going to be a little bit more complex especially one part of the post due to the way that we've modeled this and I've mentioned that whilst we're modeling it this is all something that I've taken into account and that I kind of wanted to highlight as we go through. Although that will have some complexities because if you remember, all of this section is one piece because we've modeled this as one section, which isn't actually combined to the second section. Um, and like I said at the time, that was so that it's actually going to be very easy to unwrap this section, uh, this one highlighted here. And it's going to be a little bit more complex, but not exactly difficult to unwrap this section. But it did keep the geometry kind of as clean as we could. Uh, we only really had to worry about when we're beveling and we get some extra detail here, but this isn't going to be a huge issue for our game assets. So we could always, I suppose, get the easier parts unwrapped first of all. So I'm going to go into the UV editing. Um, I'm going to select everything and just press unwrap so that we get a new unwrap for these and turn on our standard. So I'm going to go into UV, do our live unwrap, and then right click over here and then press U over here and again do a live unwrap. So I'm going to deselect everything and we'll just start with this one. So I know that we're going to want a line going all the way across here. There's not really a front or a back. Uh, this is going to be seen pretty much anywhere, although you are probably going to be a little bit less likely to see things down here. Um, and if there was a back, I suppose this would be it. So I'm going to create a seam along here. So I'm just control selecting the edge loop there. Uh, we can press control and E, mark a seam. And again, we can already see how this is going to start looking whilst we unwrap this. So like we've seen previously with the fence, we know that we're going to want to add some easing on the edges around here because that's where a lot of the stretching is happening. So if we go to the back of this part of the post, just going to shift select to get this loop, press Control and E, mark that seam. So that's kind of tidied that bit up and eased that off nicely. And we can do the same over here. So if we just go to the front of this, shift, alt and select to get that edge loop, we'll press Control and E, mark that seam, and that is pretty much the first and the, the simple post kind of unwrapped and ready to go. And I think the stretching on there is perfectly acceptable. So what we're going to do is we're now going to focus on this. So the way that we really want to think about this part of the post is we have our three bits of metal. So um, this section, this section, and this one at the bottom. So they're going to want to be put into their own small part of the texture. So if we approach those first of all, that should make then unwrapping the rest of the wooden posts a little bit easier. If we start with this one at the bottom, we can Alt Shift Select to grab that edge loop around here. We'll mark that seam and we'll see what that gives us. So that kind of unwraps. Um, if we look at this in face mode, so I'm going to press 3 to go into face mode, press L to select that. You can see that all of that is now in relation to this bottom bit. So that already gives us just our metal divider, which is really good. The stretching on there, I'm going to try and keep the stretching as low as possible, although we're not actually going to be that concerned with it, because again, it's just going on a flat color grid. Um, I will try and ease this up just a little bit. So what we're going to want to do, we can see the main issue are on these larger sections in the middle. So if we just create a loop, uh, I'm going to control click to create a loop there or a selection and we'll unwrap that and maybe just do the same on the other side. So I'm going to get that one there and then control click down there, mark that seam. Uh, and that is looking a lot better. And then what this means is in face mode, we can press L just on these and it will, remember it will select based on the division of the seam. So we can easily then grab, start grabbing our metal pieces, which is gonna make this really handy to move around for when we want to line this up with the texture. So we'll do a similar process on the rest of the metal bits. So we're gonna want the edge loop around here. So Alt Shift Select and Alt Shift Select to those. Press Control and E, mark that seam. And again, we're getting another of our metal sections. Uh, now before tidying that up, I wanna kind of get all of this looking as close to the finished unwrap as we can. So I'm actually gonna do this metal section first, but we will be going back to the bottom one in a second. Uh, grab all of these and again, mark seam with those. And that is pretty much all of the metal bits now done. I think there's gonna be a bit of an issue here, but we'll find out what's going on and fix that. Oh no, that's a wooden beam, that's fine. So that should be the metal section we've just unwrapped. Yeah, okay. 
So now what we want to do is kind of get this looking more like the wooden beams because that is just terrible at the moment. So we can come up here. In fact, I think one of the things we're going to want to do when we're easing the stretching over here on the metal sections is to create a line going through here. So we could probably account for that with the wooden pillar as well. So I'm going to go from this side first of all and grab this edge just here and control select down here to see what that does. So that is selecting all of the edges down this side and I think that's actually going to help quite a bit. So I'm going to mark that seam and there you go. You can see immediately actually that fixed most of the issues on the metal and that's partly why I left this until cleaning up the metal sections until we've done the wood because I knew that we'd need to unwrap those areas anyway and we could do that all in one go. Uh, and all that really leaves is we want to make sure we've got our seam around the top. So control E um, which I think um, is going to be this bit here. Yep so that is obviously all combined and this is another thing to do when you're UV unwrapping. You can obviously just jump straight in and try and add edges everywhere but it's quite interesting to see what relates to which part of the 3D model to get an idea of which bits you're fixing before you actually go ahead and apply the seams and stuff. So we know that we need to ease this bit up so we're going to come in control E mark seam here um, and then we and there we go so we've now got a much nicer bit of unwrapping done here and finally I'm not sure where this is going to be um, so just like that. Okay, so that's this bit of metal. That's looking a lot worse, I think, than the other bits, although I suppose that's going to be the middle bit, yeah. And then the bottom bit we've already unwrapped. So that just means that what we want to do here is create another seam going down the other edge just to allow that to open up a little bit more again. So we'll grab those, control select down here, and then I'm going to shift select so we can do this in one go, and then control select down here, uh, mark that seam, and allow that to open up a little bit there on the other side. And I was hoping that would end up more like the bottom bits, but it looks as though we're going to need to add some extra seams, which I was hoping we could avoid here. And in fact, looking at it now, we're going to do a little bit of tidy up, um, some mid UV wrap tidy up, because we should have really addressed this earlier. It's not going to change the unwrap too much, but we don't need, although I've, like I've said, N-Gons aren't actually an issue when it comes to importing to the engine. And we know that we've kind of finished with this anyway, so we don't need to model any more details on it. So we don't need to worry too much about edge loops and things like that being added. This end gone is actually really simple to fix. So I'm going to go through that process with you now as well. So what we're going to do is select in vertex mode. Let's go back to modeling quickly as this will be a little bit easier to see. In vertex mode I'm going to grab this and this and press Alt M to merge and we're going to merge those at last. And then if we do that on this side as well, uh, this was an end gone by the way because if you look over here uh, we've got one edge, two, three, four, five, six. So we've actually got six edges there um, which is not ideal um, but with, if we select this vert and this vert and then alt m and it lasts again now we've got one two three four so we've, we're back to our quad which is going to be much better to work with and we've got a try in there which is fine a try again is going to be better than an n gone sometimes you just can't get away from using a try and all of this is going to be triangulated when we put it in the engine anyway but these are really simple fixes so i'm just going to go around and do this for all of the faces up here and this happened because we did the bevel but like I said this is a very simple fix and probably should have done that earlier. So I'll put this on in the background because it's just the same process over and over for all of these verts. Uh, same shortcut so follow along do that and I'll be back when I when I finish this fix. I just realized one thing I kind of forgot to mention uh, the main reason that I've thought of doing this is this is going to be a perfect example here rather than just focusing on removing n-gons and the vertex data. Remember what I said in the previous videos that when you're creating a seam any extra seam is also extra data. So as well as having an extra edge here we also have an extra seam. So like I said this is going to count I think it's almost like double the polygons. So by removing this one edge by doing this merge we're also removing a seam or a line, a line an edge of the seam as well. So this is more the reason that I'm actually going back and doing this is because I realized whilst looking at this we've actually got a lot of extra seam information coming from the unwrap. But again I'll just finish this last face in the background. Um, I'll leave the recording in but I'll just speed it up a little bit and then we'll finish off the unwrapping. Okay, so with that done, we're going to go back into the UV editing window. I think this is all updated live as we were doing it. Um, but just to be sure, if we select everything and press U and unwrap, uh, we can see that's updated a little bit, so that's fine. It did have some 
uh, progress that could be updated from the changes we've just made. Um, so I'm just going to reconfirm which bits we need to focus on. So I'm going to go into face mode. We've got that bit, so that's looking pretty good. And that bit's looking fine. That is down there, which without adding a whole bunch of extra seams is probably, I think the trade-off's fine because again, uh, stretching is okay. We're doing flat colors. It's going to be fine. So this is where you get to decide whether you want to cut more seams to loosen these or whether based on the technique that you're using, we're happy to leave it. So I'm going to go and just add some extra seams around here because that is going to be a bit easier. It's a better shape to work with and fit into the texture grid as well, actually. So it means we can get more objects in a single spot because we're not getting these very abstract shapes coming around here. So I'm just going to add these edges. I think that's going to be the best option uh, because we can definitely line these up next to each other and cram in a lot more information that way. So I'll just get that one, mark that seam, and that's pretty much everything done. So if the UV mapping done on the post, we want to do the same as we did with the other objects. We want to preview this to make sure that all of the textures are in the right place and we've got the right colors. So we're going to go and add a material. We want a new slot. We want to assign our texture material. Uh, obviously, this is going to be pretty bad at the moment. Uh, that will then update in this window. And we can start by uh, making sure that we have all of this unwrapped. Uh, we'll put this into an average island scale is already done by default that's fine and then we can start grabbing the bits that we want to put into the correct places so for me i think this was the color of the post that's going for so i'm just going to grab everything move it off of the texture to begin with and make sure that we are in face mode and i'll grab all of the wooden parts remember that you'll probably have to do the uh, back half or anything which is completely separated like this bit at the top so that is all of our wood which we can then press G and move this up and move this into place. Okay, so we've now got the color of the post. Uh, and again, actually, because of the way that I've done this, um, just realized, so we've got the fence color, the bucket color. So in fact, all of this uh, brown here is available for use. Not that it really matters, but we can just give that all of the space it needs. And then likewise, uh, the only other bit just seen down here, that's another bit of the wood here. So just going to move this over, scale that down, just below there, press B to box select all of those and then move that up so it all fits. So that is the wood done here. I think I use that for the stone. So that means that that must be the metal for the post. Uh, so we can quite simply just select everything else and then start pulling this over here. So this is what I meant with all of those kind of lined up nicely. It means I can come in, select just these, move these down here, maybe rotate them if needed. Uh, rotation doesn't matter too much here and then grab the rest of it and just move it in place. And with that done, we have our post colored as needed, <laughs> apart from this one edge here and there. Why has that happened? Just something I overlooked. So I'm gonna grab that, pressing L to select those faces and L to select these faces. And we'll just move this back up into the wooden section. Nice, simple fix. So then if we go into modeling, go into material preview, we can see us looking as we would expect. And we can compare this then to the fence and the rocks, and it's all kind of coming together and looking pretty cool at this stage. One thing to uh, mention is if we select the fence and the post, go into edit mode, so select everything, just want to make sure that these nails and the metal here are not overlapping each other. So if we go back into UV ed editing, uh, that has actually happened. It's going to be a nice simple fix, so just deselect everything, press L in face mode on the screws, and maybe just move these down here a little bit give them their own space. I'm actually just going to rotate these and then put these next to the other nails. Um, and they are now all spaced and there will be no overlap errors or anything inside of the engines. Okay, so that is the post done, which leaves us with the actual metal lamp, which will be in the next topic. So I'll leave that video here. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps and is greatly appreciated. And of course, do consider subscribing to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.